Hello, CSA kids, and welcome to week two of Clue Catchers. It's Ronnie here. I am greeting you from sunny, sunny Florida. I hope you all are doing well. Of course, I'm going to start off with our icebreaker question. And our question for today is, if you had a pet dinosaur, what would you name it? I like how my tongue is orange. It's orange Gatorade. I just drink it. Sorry. Um, I think if I had a pet dinosaur, I would, I would actually call it Sprouts. I don't know why, but the green and the sprout symbol from the store just reminds me of a dinosaur. So I think I'd call it Sprouts, which is probably a name for something small, but hopefully I have a nice big dinosaur like a T-Rex. Anyway, that's what I would call my dinosaur. What would you name your dinosaur? Well, I'm going to go straight into our Bible lesson for today. Today, we're going to talk. Up, we're going to start from the beginning. We're going to start in Genesis, the first book of the Bible, and we're going to talk about how God made everything, everything, literally everything. God, for example, made the trees that you see, the water that you see in the beach, all the sand, your mom, dad, your siblings. He made everything. So you can already start to think, wow, our God is incredibly creative. He's incredibly wise and he's incredibly powerful. And he is. And parts of that identity of God is in you as one of his children. But what I want us to remember at the end of today is that God made everything and he made the first people. So let's talk about that story. Um, our our Bible verse from today is taken from our Bible story rather is taken from Genesis chapter 2 verses 7 to 18 and also the same chapter chapter 2 verses 18 to 25 um, I'll say a quick prayer before I read it for you and I'll stop in the middle of each verse and we'll, we'll chat a little bit Lord I thank you so much for this time that we have together uh, at CSA Kids to learn your word, to search you, and when we search for you in your word, you reward us. So I just pray that this time together be rewarding for all those that hear it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So hopefully um, this is rewarding to you all. So I'm going to read Genesis chapter 2 verses 7 to 8 and also 18 through 25 from the message translation of the Bible, which is really easy to understand. Um, if you have time, go ahead and pull up your Bible, whether it's on your, your iPad or with your mom and dad and their Bible, or just listen, because I'll, I'll read it to you. So um, it says, at the time God made earth and heaven before any grass or shrubs had sprouted from the ground, God hadn't yet sent rain on earth nor was there anyone around to work the ground. The whole earth was watered by underground springs. God formed man out of the dirt from the ground and blew into his nostrils the breath of life. The man came alive, a living soul. So God made man and woman. Then God planted a garden in Eden in the east. In the east. He put the man he made, he put the man he had just made in it. He made all kinds of trees grow from the ground, trees beautiful to look at and good to eat. The tree of life was in the middle of the garden and also the tree of knowledge of good and evil. So what we see with these couple of verses is that God made everything. Everything that you see. You could sit and think about that for a minute. Even that pet dinosaur that I named Sprouts. God would have made that. Anything that exists. There's nothing that exists 
on this earth that wasn't made by God or through him. What I want you to remember today, specifically, because everything is a lot, I want you to remember today that God made people. The first man, Adam, and you're going to see later, the first woman, Eve. God made the first people, which means he made you and he made me, and that makes us special. So, jumping down to verses 18 through 25, it says, God said it is not good for man to be alone. I'll make him a helper, a companion. So God formed from the dirt of the ground all the animals of the field and all the birds of the air. He brought them to the man and he gave Adam a job. He said, Adam, I've made all these animals. Can you name them for me? And Adam met everything. He met the cattle, he met the cows, he met the sheep, he met the dogs, the cats, the birds. He named them all, he did what he was supposed to do, but he didn't find a companion, a friend, someone to live and do life with that he could relate to and love. So God saw that this was an issue. It's not good for Adam to be alone. It's not good for any man to be alone. And so this is what God did. He put man, Adam at that time, into a deep sleep. That kind of sleep after Thanksgiving dinner, deep sleep. And as Adam slept, God removed, this is interesting, a little surgical procedure here, God removed one of Adam's ribs and replaced it with flesh. God then used that rib that he removed from Adam um, to make or form woman and presented her to Adam. Here she is. The man said, finally, bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh. Name her woman as she was made from man. Therefore, a man leaves his father and mother and embraces his wife. They become one flesh. The two of them, the man and his wife, were naked but felt no shame. So what we see here is that God took his time to not only form man from the dirt and breathe life into him, but to also take from man part of who he is and form a woman. And then he says, I want you two to be together and have relationship. So maybe we're not ready to get married. We're still young. I'm still young too. But what we see here is that God has an incredible ability to bring life and to create. And he created us, the first people, and of course, everything. And he also wants us to have relationship with the other people around us, with our parents, with our friends, with our teachers. He wants us to have healthy relationships with them because he knows it's not good for us to be alone. So we thank you, Lord God, for making us, for making everything, and help us to love it and embrace it as you want us to. So I, I wanted to share with you all something that I made. That's what's peeking over here. I love flowers, but I, I hate killing things, so I just make these like really interesting little flower arrangements that I just decorate my table with. That and candles, of course, and obviously I love pink. But I made this, just like God made everything, I made this little thing. I also made this one too. They're all going to be pink, as you can see. But what I used to make it, funny thing, is this little styrofoam ball, right? That I got at the dollar store and these little like flower pieces and I literally just stick them in here in any arrangement that I like and I can use my creativity to just fill it up and then I just put some glue on it and I stick it on this little candle holder but you see we can make things too we don't always make it from scratch though and that's what God did and that's what makes him so amazing um, I will share an encouraging word with you all right now that God made you. He made Adam, he made Eve, and he made you, and he loves you. I know you hear it a million times, but have you ever made something like this and you just cherish it because you made it and you put so much energy and effort into it? That's how it is with God. He, he made you with, with intention and with love and with care. 
So remember that. There will come a day when you have to know that you have value and worth just because God made you. Not because you do everything right, but just because God made you. And you can take it a step further and love others, knowing that God made everything. So maybe they're not nice. Maybe they're not kind. Maybe they don't believe what you believe. But maybe they don't look like you look. But God made them too. So you shouldn't have to change who you are because of them. But you should, as a Christian, be able to love them. So... With that, I'll recite the memory verse one more time, and then I'll say goodbye. So our memory verse for today is taken from Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 11. Ecclesiastes 3:11, and it says, He, meaning God, made everything beautiful in its time. So some things, they take a little time for you to see how valuable and beautiful they are but keep trusting in God. He made everything. Even the things that might not seem good right away, like some challenges or some struggles or some you know, difficult emotions, in time, God will make everything beautiful. So we thank you, Lord God, for making everything, for making me, for making you, for making the first man and the first woman, and of course, making a way for us to come back to you through your son, Jesus. We remember how creative, how powerful, and how loving you are to make us and then make us for relationships. I pray you would bless our relationships with each other, with our family, and of course with you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Goodbye and love you all. And of course, God loves you. He made it.